Welcome to Infertility and Me Podcast, a show that amplifies diverse stories about the struggles of infertility and fertility in a safe space. Our goal is to normalize fertility stories that validate, give hope, and create a community where no one is left silently suffering. You guys, welcome back to another episode of Infertility and Me podcast. I'm your host, Monique Farouk. You can call me Monique. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you for tuning in each week, for sharing, for getting us in the top 100 podcasts of personal journals in the United States. So you guys are the bomb.com for tuning in and for letting me into your space, your ear and your visuals. And thank you to all of the guests thus far can't do any of this without you guys' support, continued support, and I appreciate you so much. If this is your first time listening to the show, welcome, welcome, welcome. Just before I introduce our friend Mandy that's guesting with us today, I do want to remind you on Patreon for private community Discord chat, you can download the Patreon app as well as the Discord app. And when you join Patreon, you will get access to the invite link to join the Patreon community chat. And so what that does is allow us to chat with each other, kind of like, remember the AOL days where you were going to like a little chat room and stuff? So Discord is just like that. Discord provides chat features for those who have Patreon pages and for the community. So instead of us having like another app, like WhatsApp, which everybody may not be comfortable using, I decided to use Discord because it's a well-known name and also because it's just easy and you could just download the app and then download the Patreon app to your phone. You, you can use it on desktop as well, both of them, but you don't have to. You can use it directly on your phone and we can chat with each other, get to know one another, also meet people in our local areas who are a part of the community and would like to meet up and things like that. And then also you can share your wins, your losses in the community. And it's just something something private for us to have. And that's a perk of joining the Patreon community. Just come on over to Patreon so we can get to know each other better. We can build a private community away from social media without all the algorithms. Okay, And we could just get to know each other, have monthly live chats with me maybe a guest or just us by ourselves, venting, talking, getting to know each other, as well as sharing what we're going through. Join me on Patreon, you guys. Let's do this thing together because we cannot go through infertility alone. And when you join Patreon, you will not only be able to find your tribe, but you will also be helping the continuation of Infertility and Me podcast. A bit of support is greatly greatly appreciate it. It's not expensive. You can join for as little as $5 a month, whether you're watching on YouTube or whether you are listening on the audio platform of your choice. You can just hit the show details and it will have a link where it says, join me on Patreon. Tap that, go right there, get signed up for the Patreon community and let's get this ball rolling. Thank you guys again for being here. And so our guest today is Mandy Revick. Husband tried to conceive for 10 years before finally getting their BFP and having their daughter. And she was 42 when she gave birth to her daughter. And she went to Barbados for her treatment after dealing with three separate specialists here in the States and not having any success, and not resonating with the doctor, and one of the doctors actually really, really hurting her feelings, and she tells us about that, because he told her that she was basically too old for IVF treatment, and he kind of sounded like he didn't want to treat her. You guys will hear about that in this episode. You'll also hear about some of the outrageous things that Mandy's mom said while she was in the midst of trying to conceive. She's going to tell us great detail also. She tells us also about her and her husband meeting and how that happened. It's a really great story as well. And then Mandy also has endometriosis. And even though she did not get treated for it in the way of removal of the endometriosis, Barbados found another way for her Barbadian clinic found another way for her to be treated for her endometriosis before moving into 
IVF cycles and she did three and got pregnant on the second one. So trigger warning, this is a success story. And then the third time she had IVF treatment, it was unsuccessful. She was trying for a sibling when her daughter was around like one-ish years old. And so Mandy, Mandy gives us a full account of her experience going through multiple doctors and not finding one. Like, for instance, the last doctor that she saw, he hurt her feeling so bad that she didn't go back to get serious about treatment for two years because she had been emotionally damaged by what the doctor was saying to him and then the previous doctors before that just not being of any use really. And so make sure that you tune in for the entire episode, friends, so that you can feel validated, seen, and heard through today's episode with Mandy. We have Mandy, we're back with Mandy Revic on the line giving us her story and her details to momhood and especially being a mom over 40 now. So Mandy, thank you girl for coming onto the show and offering your story to give hope, inspiration to the community. Thank you. This is exciting. Yes. And please don't be nervous. Please don't be nervous. <laughs> so how did you and hubby meet? How did that happen, girl? Um, so we met in our early 30s early 30s. Um, I actually lived in California at the time pursuing uh, TV and film production. And I left all my friends in New York who had graduated college in New York and stayed and worked in New York. They met through hanging out, partying, clubbing, some guys, one of our college friends dated my husband's business partner. So they all kind of intertwined with each other, knew, had known each other for almost 10 years. And every year around the holidays, they would say, you got to meet this guy, Johnny. You got to meet this guy, Johnny. He's so fun. He's so much fun. He'll make you laugh. And I'm like, okay, well, every year I came home for the holidays to see my family. He would go to see his family for the holidays. So we always missed each other. But all of my friends... Even people I went to college with that I didn't even know had a relationship with him. Somehow we were always connected, but we had never met until one day my friends were like, you know what? As soon as you land, we're picking you up at the airport and we're going clubbing and you'll see your parents tomorrow. And I was like, oh my God, my parents are going to lose their shit. <laughs> if I do that, like I have to call them and say, mom, I'm here. Cause you know, my mom's like, you're coming home. You have to have dinner with us. You have to spit, you know, tell us how LA is. And you know, so my friends were like, nope, nope. You had to just hang with us first night out. Like you need it. And they knew I was stressed from working in LA, you know, working in the film industry. I was a, you know, independent filmmaker. So it was a lot of stress. And yeah, you know, one night we're out clubbing and drinking and this guy comes up and he's like, hey, you know, you're Mandy. And I was like, yeah, you're Johnny. Yes, we I met, am. we were both really drunk. It was a, hey, hey, hi, hi, bye. And I thought I'd never see him again. And honestly, I didn't think about it. I was really drunk. And <laughs> Um, a few days later, he sends me a message on MySpace that tells my age. Good old MySpace. <laughs> Good old MySpace. Good old MySpace. So we, we chatted on that for a minute and I still lived in LA and he's like, you know, when you're back in New York, I'd love to take you out to dinner. And I was like, sure, you know, um, I'll be back in a few months. My brother was actually, um, christening his daughter, his first daughter at the, that time. And he, I was like, I'll come out to New York for that. So maybe I'll meet up with you. And so I came home back to New York, christened, um, went to the christening for my niece. And that night that I got home, my mom uh, was like, I have to tell you something. And I was like, what's that? She's like, um, the doctor told me I have breast cancer. Mm. So what do you mean? Like, what doctor? When did you go to the doctor? What do you mean breast cancer? I had n no clue what she was talking about. I was just completely blank. I was supposed to meet Johnny that night um, for drinks. And I was like, hey, I can't meet you. Like, some family stuff happened. And he pursued me for, like, you know, a few weeks. Like, hey, you want to meet mm -hmm. up? You want to meet up? And I kept, like, saying no, 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 no. Because... 
I was locked into what's going on with my mom that I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't even go back to LA and go back to work. Like I was like, okay, we have to figure this out. Like, you know, I have to go with you to your doctor. I have to understand what's going on. What's this process? Like breast cancer, breast is like, you know, so, so important. Um, so finally, one day he calls and he's like, hey, you want to go out for drinks for dinner? And I was like, look, I, I can't go out with you. I'm, I, I, I just can't. My mom's going through some stuff. She found out she has breast cancer. I've been going with her to doctor's appointments and I'm trying to wrap my head around that. So he's like, in his way, in Johnny's way, he's like, you know, you probably need to step away from it for a minute and get a understanding of like what's happening you're probably too in it so why don't we just come out you know you can talk to me i'm a stranger i don't really know anything about you i'm not going to judge anything and we can just talk we could talk about that we could talk about something else and then you can go back home and mm -hmm. i was like oh, this guy he's you know, i was like he's right that i do need to get away for a minute but I'm like, it's a stranger. Why do I want to be with a stranger for drinks to talk about my personal stuff? But I did it anyways. I went and we had a really good time. Like, it wasn't like crap. We weren't joking and laughing, but I was able to like really put like all my feelings on the table of how I felt. Mm -hmm. And he was really supportive, gave really good advice. And from that point on, I talked to him every day while my mom was going through her stuff. I saw him maybe twice a week because I was going to doctor's appointments. Um, but the unfortunate side of that is that while I was going through the stuff with my mom, his mm -hmm. mom was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. So, yeah. So that's so at that point we both became each other is like that's that bond the bond, bond the that common like i need to vent i need to scream i need to cry so we mm -hmm. we were kind of forced into this like bond that like okay how do i help you feel better or not not make you feel judged and mm -hmm. that built that's what built our relationship like we became such good friends we were dating but we didn't really notice we were dating because we were in such like a a, a genuine friendship mm -hmm. that we're like, oh, well, you know, like we, we're actually seeing each other more <laughs> often mm -hmm. and talking on the phone. Like you would do with your best friend, you know, when you were younger, um, prior to children. And that's how, wow. you know, we became this like real um, item. <laughs> item and and people are like oh my god you guys have such a great relationship i'm like you you don't understand like what we've been through to create this relationship it was a lot of ups and downs and you know his mom unfortunately passed away after um all the treatment and stuff and my mom was able to um get through one um a, a mastectomy and a lumpectomy wow yeah so she she was uh, definitely able to survive through that and you know so I, after his mom passed away that was another you know low point also that you know we had to figure out how to keep our relationship strong while and he's authentic going right because you don't you because now they're calling it trauma bonding well, yeah. that's what they've always called it, but yeah. it's now mainstream words, right? Because yeah. everybody, it's cool to be in therapy now, right? So, <laughs> yeah. so trauma bonding, yeah. Trauma and, bonding. And, yeah, it's, that's kind of scary because you like, well, after the trauma is over and after we have some time to grieve the grief of the, of the trauma we've experienced together yeah. and being codependent on each other, essentially, um, not in a toxic way, I don't think. It doesn't sound like, and um, you know better than I do, <laughs> of course. So, yeah, I mean, you do, um, you do question it. You question, like, do we yeah. have anything else in common besides just yes. this? Like, what else is, what else do we know or like about each other? Mm -hmm. um, but Johnny's really, really a strong individual as far as how he looks at life and, mm -hmm. you know, his appreciation for life and what's, 
what people bring to the table. We, you know, jumping a little bit when we went through fertility, like he was my rock. Like he just, he would make it so fun and funny that the times that I did cry is when he was crying with me. It wasn't like I was like emotional by myself. He was there like in the emotion as well. So, and when I was giving, when I had to do shots, he's the one giving me shots and he's cracking up and making me laugh and I'm like, stop, this is serious. And he's like, oh yeah, this is serious, mm -hmm. right? This is from you being a B to me yesterday. Like I'm gonna jab this needle. I'm like, okay. So he was able to kind of bring help balance. bring some balance keep it, you know, keep my emotions aligned and the days that, you know, he could like look at me and say, all right, we're going for a walk mm -hmm. or, you know what, let's go take a drive. We'll, we'll find, you know, something that makes you happy, that makes you smile. Or he'll just randomly walk in with like flowers and chocolate and ice cream and he'll sit down with me on the couch and watch the girl film and be like, oh, she's such a bee. She's awesome. Like, <laughs> well, shout out to John for being yeah. able to and being able to cry. Yeah, like, that's, a, that's a really that's a that's a, a trait in him being able to, to to tap into his emotional side like that. Yeah. That's amazing and be vulnerable. And so that I'm sure that was a great part of your coping, like you just said a few minutes ago, ability your diagnosis and the length of time that you guys went through infertility too and so after, how long did you guys date before you got married? That's what I wanted to ask you. So uh, we dated for about six years before we got married, but we started fertility treatments before we got married. Okay. So, um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 the story is like, you know, first you meet, then you marry, then you have a baby, but we had already been through so much. It was like, we almost felt like we were married already. I mean, we were living together. It had been through, you know, my mom, his mom, you know, we went through the recession together, you know, it was, we had already done that. So the baby thing was more of a, we want this together. We know we're going to be together. So let's, let's have a baby. And um, we were trying for about, three years prior to all fertility treatments to have a baby on our own. And I was, you know, um, obsessed with Google and how to have a baby and keep your legs up in the air and uh, drink all the pineapple juice Pomegranate. possible. Pomegranate. <laughs> Pomegranate is a big one, yeah. Wear the socks. Wear the socks, you know, go do the acupuncture, do the everything and overdose on herb herbal um pills and and tea kind of supplement. And, yes. And everybody did has a mother. Do, <laughs> yes. Did you ever do the castor oil rub? No. Belly? Did you ever I do didn't, that? I didn't do that. What's uh, the craziest thing you think you did while you were trying to conceive before your diagnosis. So the, the, the herbal thing, I mean, I was always kind of doing that mm -hmm. before. The craziest thing is keeping my legs up for 20 minutes and trying to read emails upside down <laughs> and send emails out and send payroll paychecks upside down. Well, not upside down, legs up. Mm -hmm. and, and like, oh my God. Like, and that this, was normal. That was a normal Tuesday. <laughs> was, it was a Tuesday. It was a Tuesday for payroll to come out Thursday. Yes. yes. So I'm I, all about it. <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. I love it. And I remember him saying, I'm going to take pictures of this because we should like mark this if you do get pregnant. Like, frame oh. it. Oh, I wish I had a framed it. Mm. I I was like no please don't and then coming out of that like I don't know if you remember feeling like dizzy and like you're like yeah. okay my equilibrium is off and um yeah a few days later I I got my period like three days later is it early or what happened right. Why did I get my and then it's like well who the hell do I tell who do I have to talk to that I can tell that I had my leg up in <laughs> in the fucking air okay <laughs> for thirty three minutes. <laughs> like, who do I tell? Who do I run to? 
to tell about this. There's no, there's not a fucking soul out there. The people be like, there's like, and that's the crazy thing and why you need community because nobody else is going to understand that thing the way you understand it. And, and there was no Facebook groups do. then. And yeah, there was no, there wasn't. There was no yeah. Facebook groups for me to talk to. Let me tell you the nope. best story though. The best story is, so I'm told, I, we found a doctor, we found mm -hmm. a few doctors. I finally <laughs> opened up to my family, my mom about like, we're trying to have a baby, but it's not mm -hmm. working naturally. So my mom calls me, we're driving in LA, windows down, sun's shining, feeling good, you know, like, okay. Mm -hmm. now, are you Latina? Are you Latina, Mandy? No, no. Um, okay. My parents are from Trinidad. Oh, you're West Indian. Oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> I know you probably get that all the time though. I grew up in Washington Heights though, in New York in a Dominican neighborhood. Uh -huh. So oh, see, that's where the accent I'm getting the accent from. Okay, so I, thought, I thought you might have been Dominican. Yes, New York, <laughs> so West Indian, like everything uh -huh. mixed in there. Okay, now I see the West Indian in you. Now you say it, I see it in you because my mom and my dad have had a lot of West Indian friends for many, many years, and so I see it in you now that you that you've told me. But I thought you were Dominican, possibly. I know. First before I see. <laughs> no, no. Um, and sometimes I say yes though, because I'm like I grew up in Dominican neighborhood. Right. And the only reason I ask is because <laughs> because of the cultural biases about fertility treatments and such. That's why I ask what your what your cultural background is because um, it's very taboo in brown oh, communities, yeah. you know. So that's why I was wondering. And so. the West Indians uh, as well, like you're. Mm -hmm. Don't tell a West Indian man that you're having fertility issues because the nonsense that comes out of their mouth is really yeah. They're like, you know what? I'm just not going to say anything. They, they don't hold their tongue back. That's what I remember about my dad's friend. Um, he's still alive, actually, but he's in his 70s. But he was off the chain. <laughs> he's probably worse now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And yeah, when you get after 70, like, I don't have to answer no goddamn body, okay? I'm living on this earth for 17 years. <laughs> and you guys is BS. <laughs> Hang on it. Yes, and it's it's every time I see him, he always has something slick to say. So I can only imagine what it would be like going through that, going through fertility issues with the Caribbean and or oh yeah, um, West Indian man. Yeah. So let me tell you what my mom said. So my mom calls me. I put her on speakerphone, thinking she's just gonna tell me about her routine doctor's appointment. Uh -huh. She's like, Mandy, in her accent. Mm -hmm. I was in the doctor's office and I was reading a magazine, and they were saying how to have how to have a baby naturally and so i was like okay well how do you what did they say and she's like they said that you should do it from the back omg mom we are not having this conversation like seriously. mortified <laughs> and he she's on speakerphone and my husband hears and he goes that's what i've been talking about oh, yeah okay. see mom knows mom knows so <laughs> I wanted to jump out of a moving car because my mother just basically said out loud, I should do it from the back. Oh my gosh. And I don't think she understood what that meant. <laughs> no. And then like now what you have in diagnosis of infertility is like, when you think about it now, you're like, God damn, that was even worse than it was then now that we know. Like, this is crazy. But yes, yeah, I'm glad you told that story. That was a good laugh. So, oh my gosh. So yes. after the, you guys are like, you, you're trying, you're trying, you're having these conversations with your mom, these outrageous, blandish conversations with mom, right? <laughs> and so when when did it, after the three years, is that when you guys really was like, you know what, we got to figure what is going on? What is so going on? we, um, after the three years of trying on our own and, you know, I'm having sex, got my period, having sex, got my period, having sex. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to my OB and I was like, you know, I'm trying to get pregnant and haven't gotten pregnant. And she wasn't really um, very informative on what I should do. She was just like, you just need to see a specialist. So I was like, okay, well, what is that? Like, what is a specialist? I don't know mm -hmm. what a specialist is. What, what, what am I specializing in? Like, I thought an OB is a specialty anyways. So what does that mean? And she was like, well, you have to find a fertility specialist. So I was like, okay, well, I find that a little strange because in all honesty, I had never heard of a fertility specialist. I don't even, it didn't even, it didn't dawn on me that that was a problem. And I didn't even 
know at the time that there was a doctor spe spe specific to mm -hmm. that. So, you know, I went home, I went into my um, insurance, I logged in to see, you know, doctors in that um, insurance policy. And it said infertility specialist. And so I click on it and it said, it, we don't accept this. Clicked on the other doctor, don't accept, don't accept. So it's like, okay, well, how am I supposed to get these doctors? So I called a few of them and they're like, yeah, we don't take insurance. You have to pay cash. So I was like, okay, cool. That's not a problem, like, I guess. And like, oh, it's $250 for your first consult. Mm -hmm. like, just to talk. Just to talk. I was like, are you going to take te do tests or anything? Is there something that's included? And they're like, no, you just see the doctor. So they're like, it's like a copay. I was like, yeah, but my copay is like $20. Like, you're talking about $250. So I made an appointment with one doctor and, um, you know, he was, he was nice. He was very, you know, informative. He told me about what pills to take, what prenatals, you know, what's going on. But I still didn't understand what he was talking about. He was like, oh, you know, we could do IUI, we can do IVF, we can do, you know, we could talk about adoption, surrogacy. And I think that's when the same feeling that my mom felt when they talked about cancer mm -hmm. and not knowing what else happened after that, my, like, everything just, like, came out of me. I was... I heard nothing that he said after that. And my husband was there and he heard everything. And we walked out of there and I was like, there, is there something wrong with me? Mm -hmm. And I just started crying. Like I cried like the entire ride home. I was like, I don't understand what's happening. Like everybody else is just getting pregnant. Like the hardest part of getting pregnant or not even getting pregnant on TV is just giving birth, right? Isn't that the hardest part? Well, why is well, why is this happening? What, what's happening? Mm -hmm. And my husband was like, "I don't know, babe. I don't. I don't understand either. I, I'm learning with you." And I, I had no one else to talk to. I had mm -hmm. like my mom didn't understand. She had children easily. Um, everybody I knew, and growing up in Washington Heights, people were popping out babies. Multiple, multiple. Well, at the age of 16, like, pop, 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 girls in high school, like, are getting pregnant. I never imagined this would be happening to me. And the fact that it was happening, and they didn't understand what was happening. Right. And so that's what kind of put us in this place that we were at. And, How and old were you at the time? So when I met the first doctor, I was 30 seven years old okay so at, at least four years had gone by before we saw our first doctor and then um after the first doctor when i was 37 he was like <laughs> let's take you to our financial department and talk about you know the cost because insurance doesn't cover it and gave me a booklet like a folder and he's like mm -hmm. you know here's the cost of you know the procedure the meds this that like fifty thousand dollars. Sir, you um, said that a little bit too easy for me, sir. <laughs> we need to go back. I was like monopoly money, cause I got that. Like in the, right. in the monopoly game. I was like, well, we don't have fifty thousand dollars. And in my mind, I was like, if I give you fifty thousand dollars and I have a baby, then how do I feed my child? Like yeah. what? What happens? Those are real questions. Yeah. So I. I went home and I was like, all right, well, we're just going to have to try this naturally again. I didn't want to believe, in all honesty, that there was a problem. So, mm -hmm. I, so you didn't get any testing done with the first doctor? This first doctor? No, no, we took 250 okay. just to tell me that these are options mm -hmm. um, that I could have probably Googled for free. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so I waited another year and it, so we still didn't get pregnant. And then I was like, okay, one of um, my husband's college friends came to California and they were like, hey, well, let's meet up for lunch. Um, we haven't seen you guys. And then the invite was, we're going to invite another couple because we're trying to kill two birds with one stone. 
Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, cool. So we all met up in this nice restaurant and the other couple came and the woman was pregnant. And she was, you know, she was showing, she, she, she was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the first thing she talked about was like IVF. She's like, I did IVF, we had been trying and I finally worked and blah, blah, blah. And she's talking and I'm like, IVF? Like, mm -hmm. I had what she's talking about. I was like, IV in the vagina fucking what does I <laughs> mean yeah. like clearly she had a baby and she did IVF what is IVF and she's talking and talking and talking and I'm like I have no idea what this lady's saying and then after a while it dawned that I have probably have to do IVF like it took mm -hmm. some days to process what she was saying. And of course me Googling and going obsessed on Google about why is it I haven't gotten pregnant in like five years. And mm -hmm. I found another doctor. And at that point I was 38 years old and I had done all the labs now. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I did everything, I prepped everything. And um, I saw a doctor before this new doctor and he was like, at your age, you have a lot of eggs and it looks really healthy and you know mm -hmm. this is really good this is a benefit for you mm -hmm. um so moving forward i think you'll be able to you know do ivf and still um be able to produce a child and so I went to this doctor and of course it's a year later and I gave him all my paperwork. I was so excited, you know, I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. I got this. I got the blood work. I got the Isn't ultrasound. Funny? Isn't oh, it funny how we get excited about it? Like, yeah. We shouldn't be excited about that shit at all. <laughs> <laughs> like, especially uh, giving away a down payment to a doctor. We don't yeah, I was like, D well, so I had found out this doctor has a payment plan. So I got even more excited. I was like, oh, yeah. We could do a payment plan. Like, I don't have to drop 50K. But <laughs> by the time my kid's 38, they can help me with this payment plan. So we could do like a layaway plan if you want. Yes. Um, <laughs> so it was like, we could do that. Um, so I gave him my paperwork and um, he looked at my name. He looked at my age and he was like, so the first thing I want you to know is that you're old. So like, <laughs> Thanks. I was like, yeah, I mean, I'll be 38 in a month. And, you know, I'm excited about 38. I was like, yeah, we're going clubbing. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, um, no, like, before we do anything, you need to acknowledge that you're old. So I said to him, I was like, I know how old I am. I celebrate my birthday every year. I don't need you to Perfect. tell me that I'm old. <laughs> Yes. And, I, and I'm not old. Like, what are you talking about? And he's mm -hmm. like, well, you know, to do this process, you're past the line of a possibility. And you have to acknowledge that you're old. So the, you know, the the New York girl in me. The fire is raging. Mm -hmm. I already, I'm, I'm raging now. And it's been a long time. Like that to you. There. I turned to my husband. <laughs> And uh, if you have to cut this out, um, I said, if this motherfucker <laughs> my age one more fucking time, I'm going to leap over this desk and stab him in his eye with his own pencil. And he's there. He could hear me saying this. And my husband looks at me. He's like, looks at the doctor. And he's like, okay, um, is there a possibility that we can move past this age thing? Because, dude, you're probably going to die. Like, I can't save you. <laughs> Like, and I, I, when I looked at my husband, I honestly, like, I remember this so clearly. I couldn't look back at the doctor. I just stayed focused mm -hmm. on my husband's face. Mm -hmm. I was just like, if I look back at him, I don't know what's going to come out my mouth. I don't know what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And then I just felt like all this emotion, like, come over me. Mm -hmm. And, like, I felt the tears coming. I felt like the, 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 the butterflies or the angry butterflies in my stomach and it just I don't I don't know what happened in the rest of the the meeting um I know we got up my husband held my hand we walked out and they're like 
do you want to walk into the financial office to discuss? He was like, no, we'll, we'll uh, take the pamphlet and uh, talk about it and we'll call you guys and schedule something. Got in the car and I that stopped me from trying for two years after that. Wow. Because he wow. kept telling me that I needed to recognize how old I am. Mm. It just and you off from it. Yeah. It turned me off. It got me emotional. Mm -hmm. it, it got me it got me depressed, honestly. Yeah. It 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 really it 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 had me in a place where I never thought I'd I'd be emotional emotionally. After going through all this stuff with my mom and you know Johnny's mm -hmm. mom and then our, our relationship, I didn't think one person could literally change my view of my own life in a matter of minutes and and i let him do that in all honesty i let him because i thought of him as like okay he's the fertility god he's going to make this happen i'm gonna have this baby after all these years of trying he's gonna make this happen and instead he turned around and he was like i'll take your money but you're probably not gonna have a child which which is normal i mean we get that i i understood that problem but i didn't understand you having to remind me that i'm old yeah he put a lot of emphasis on it i'm pretty sure he was a middle-aged man at the time right he was yeah yeah he had to be in his late 60s and that's what i mean like <laughs> if anybody's old in this room it's you doc okay <laughs> Not me. Shit. That pisses me off. It really does because society places such a huge impact on a woman's age and they equate that to her being attractive or yeah. you know what I mean? And it just reminds me of the, the, the dark ages when a woman had to be married by the time she was 14 or a young girl had to be yep. married by the time she was 14 and by the time she was 30 he was looking for a second wife. Like Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nobody wants to talk about how it's hard for you to get your thing up. So leave my age out of it, okay? I mean, you got a pill that you can buy anywhere just to get your stuff up, okay? So yes. you're using stuff to help you. Clearly, there's a problem for you as well. Why Why isn't anyone making this like a big to-do? Like, I was like, you guys could go buy Vi Viagra anywhere, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. in the grocery store. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, and 70, let's see, not even 77 years ago, my dad's age, but just my aunt, like being in her early 60s, my mom, my grandmother gave birth to her at 44, got pregnant naturally. You know what I mean? What it's meant to be, it's going to be, of course, but it's not like it's, it's, you know, a death sentence. And I really think that they should increase the age for maternal, um, for the maternal age, um, what they call it, um, senior maternal age or whatever like they need to raise that a little bit i think they need to raise it a little bit they could give us a little bit more leverage i that. mean i i gave birth at the age of 42 and they yeah. put me in the geriatric uh unit to give birth that's what it is yeah yeah geriatric maternal age yeah after 35 and such wow yeah so uh, that's two doctors are a bust <laughs> doctors so are a bust you waited two more years until you were 40 to yeah. get back a third time, right? Mm -hmm. And so what, what prompted you wanting to get back? I gave up. Treatments? I gave up. I totally gave up. Um, like I said, I was I was emotionally broken and, and I couldn't, yeah. I really couldn't see myself going through talking to anyone about this again. And I, and, and I felt very alone and I felt very, you know, sad that there wasn't any anybody that could relate my stuff to. But my dad lived in Trinidad at the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my family had known. I told them. And my family is really supportive. They don't understand everything. So, you know, they leave a lot of the information for me. Like, what does this mean? I'm like, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. What does this mean? I'm not a scientist. I don't know. I don't know. But that's like the West Indian culture. Like, mm -hmm. you went to college. You should know everything. So... Mm -hmm. <laughs> So my dad calls me. He's like, listen, I don't understand what you're going through, but I heard on the radio that there's a fertility clinic here in Trinidad. And I know for you and Johnny, cost was important. 
maybe you can look here i mean and i have the house here you could stay here it'll be a little more relaxing because you could be you know i'll be here to help you i don't know what you need but maybe call these people so i was like okay dad and you know like a you know regular child that you would be when you ignore what your parents say I ignored him and I was like, sure, I'll look it up. But I was still upset. I was still sad. I couldn't, I didn't have the mental capacity to really research and look again. Because when I had started the journey, you know, I got excited when I read the good news and stuff. And so I was like, I'm not ready to be hit in the face again with bad news or, you know, it, it wasn't even bad news. It was just... The way it was presented. The way it was presented, exactly. So he would call me every day for like two weeks. Did you check him out? Did you research him? Did you do your due diligence? And I'd lie and say, yes, yes, yes. But I did it. And um, one day he called me and I was so annoyed. I was like, oh my God, like he keeps harassing me about this. So I was like, okay, dad, um, I'm reading about them right now. And I put the phone down and I started Googling them. And it said... The clinic in Trinidad was um, a sister uh, clinic to the Barbados Fertility Center. So their main center is in Barbados. So it, it moved me right into that um, site of part of their website. So I started reading it and I started like, you know, getting all engulfed in it, like Googling reviews and what people felt and how they, you know, reacted to everything. And I only saw positive stuff, positive, positive, positive reviews. But what really got me was like their main like motto was you come here to do fertility treatments. We want you to leave your laptop at home mm -hmm. and you come here as if you're coming for a vacation. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a stress free process and we will walk you through it. So I was like, well, I guess stress is kind of adding to why this is happening. And I saw all the doctors were all women. Mm -hmm. And all the doctors I'd seen before were all men, all white men on top of that. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, every office I've gone into, it's white men that were doctors and mostly white women that were sitting in the office um, waiting room. So I never really saw anybody like me waiting. And I was like, all right. And, and no one had an interracial relationship as well. So I was like, okay, I feel really left out. I feel like, you know, I'm the common denominator because everybody else looks the same except me. Mm -hmm. So I'm the one that's always the out, outcast kind of. So not, okay. so when I went on their website and I saw all these like col different colored women and it was women, I got a little excited. I was like, maybe they understand, you know, what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. So... And I did some research and I went up to Johnny and I was like, so uh, I found another place. And he's like, what? I was like, but it's in Barbados. And he's like, we are not going out of country for medical work. I was like, yeah, but people go to Mexico to get dental work and boob jobs. Why can't we go? And he's like, I was like, people go to Africa for adoption and, you know, India for medical stuff and he's like we are not we are not those people so i had to get the information in there a few more times we had to talk about it i brought it up like every opportunity i can dinner time breakfast and he was like oh, okay leave me alone mm -hmm. so he finally was like i'll do my own research so he did some research he you know googled that stuff himself and um, he was like, okay, like if you feel in your gut and your intuition says that this is going to work for you or for us, then I'm in. He's like, but if your gut feeling says that this is not right, then we're not doing it. And you have to tell me. And I was like, I always go with my gut and my intuition. I'm not, I'm not going to lie about this. So we we sent an email request and said hey i'd like to um do a console and they're like yeah we do the consult over the phone and we're not charging you I'm like oh my god check for you <laughs> you don't need another 250 dollars and it's and, significantly cheaper to get ivf in barbados from what i've read right 
Yeah. So the whole yeah. process itself was like almost 11,000. Mm -hmm. um, so total, like things were about 15. Um, I mean, you're talking about travel, hotel, food, the meds, you have to get them outside. Um, you can get meds there from them, but how to get it to you was a little bit of a difficulty. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, we spent about 15,000 and we didn't have to pay all up front. Gotcha. So that was definitely one financial like burden lifted. And, um, I, I did three rounds with them. Um, the first round was a fail. Uh, it failed. Um, we implanted, uh, two, we transferred two, mm -hmm. um, and they didn't stick. And okay. so then I went and I did another round and that's the round that I have my daughter. Okay. And then we did another round to have a sibling. And at that point I went from my first round, I had 33 eggs. I, after the blastiasis, I had eight. After genetic testing, I had three. And then the next round, I went to eight eggs one year later. Mm -hmm. And after blastiasis, I had one. Wow. Like, it's, it was such a significant drop in eggs right. um, over one year. Wow. And by this time, you were uh, over 40? Were you over 40? At uh, this, my third time, I was 44. 44, yeah, yeah. So you waited, what, until she was, what, two to go back for the sibling? Yeah. Yeah. No, she was a year, a year. She was only a year, okay. A year. So when you guys go to Barbados <laughs> to do the treatments, and you said that you did two, and the second one was the baby girl, that's your BFP, right? So were you staying in Barbados the entire time? How long were your stays? So I did... We did all the treatment at home. Um, the max days I stayed was seven days. Okay. So I didn't do a, a fresh transfer. Mm -hmm. I did. Um, I did a frozen transfer. Three times, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Wow. 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 So. You know, Why I looked at the ultrasound for the two um, that didn't work. And I was doing the math of how old they would have been. And my, I told my husband and he's like, he's like, you know, what's funny is that, yeah, we would have had two older kids by now, but to think that our daughter's name is Riley, Riley wouldn't be in this world right now. He's like, I can't imagine. Mm -hmm. And I was like, he was like, cause you know, we probably wouldn't have had her if we had two already. Mm -hmm. So it was like, yeah, I guess like, it's so, it's so crazy to like, just, you think, you know what you want. And then when you're given something totally different, it's just mind blowing. You're like this, mm -hmm. she was, she was meant to be like, she was not the best, um, uh, on the list of to transfer. And they were like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, I don't know if this one's going to work. Maybe we should try one more time and give you a little higher um, option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Embryos, yeah. Mm -hmm. And she was the one that stuck, and she was the one that beat the NICU. And she was, they were like, we might have to put her in the NICU. Like, she's preemie, she's very small. And within two hours, they're like, okay, well, I guess no NICU. Like, she's good. Like, okay. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and she's found a way to fight odds like since and she's three mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from the moment of conception right from the moment. <laughs> yes 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 and and I'm, I, and my embryo quality was very similar in that it wasn't like i was making a lot of eggs and made good eggs but for whatever reason after he it was it was um and turned into like an eight day uh embryo or not an eight-day embryo but it had his cells began to break down and stuff like that and multiply right yeah so and it was fertilized um i don't know why i forgot that it fertilized once yeah it was fertilized. <laughs> and he he wasn't the the he they called him like a grainy he was like a little grainy and it was like a bunch of little spots on there they were concerned about but he was the one 
he was that one. So I resonate with that story. Did you do like, fresh or tra- um, frozen? Fresh. Or fresh. Okay, yeah. I did um, what's called mini or natural cycle IVF. So uh, yeah, I read about that. One egg at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad your experience in Barbados was, was as good as it was. I've heard the bedside care there is phenomenal um, when I did some reading. Oh my God. Uh, I love better that. In America. Yeah. I love them. I love the doctors there, the nurse coordinators, the staff. Like after the first one that didn't work, um, they would call me, they would email me, they would check on me. It was sent on WhatsApp, they'd send me messages like, you know, we're thinking about you, you know, um, they were the ones who even suggested that, you know, I see a therapist if if it was too emotional. And yeah. which I had never thought of like you know, talking to a therapist before, because I thought it was just something I had to manage on my own. Um, but they, they were amazing. Like, even though it didn't work the first few times, I couldn't turn and blame them because they walked me through the process. They got me to understand my medical records. They got me to understand, and they they sat there and explained things, even with things I didn't understand. I was like, and they could see it in my face, like, mm, yeah, 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 I get it. And they're like, no, you don't get it. Let me, uh, <laughs> like, like talking to your see. aunties, right? <laughs> like, girl, I know you don't have it, okay? I know you don't have it, like, that, that look. So, um, and they explained it, and, you know, it was, it, it was sad and it was hurtful that it didn't work. And, you know, your body's gone through all these hormones and emotions and you're jacked up on every kind of medicine possible mm-hmm. and vitamins. They were the ones that were like, so you know that this is, this is your body. This is a woman's body. They explained it so well and they were so comforting and not once did they ever say, not nah, bitch, you're old and this shit is not going to happen. <laughs> They're like, um, we have to have hope. This, this, there is a science and we believe in science and science is why you're here. But, you know, we also believe in acupuncture. Let's, mm-hmm. let's do um, reflexology. Let's do, you know, and the first day I got there, we sat at the office and my husband was like, so what do we... Um, what can't we do since we have to start this process? And they were like, every Thursdays, there's a fish fry that happens in the city. Mm-hmm. Go to that, drink, have some, have some drinks, have some cocktails. They're like, don't go crazy, of course. And they're like, don't, we're not promoting alcohol. But enjoy your life. Be a couple. Enjoy what you love in each other and why you're here together. And they're like, I was like, can I go on the beach? Can I go on a boat? They're like, yeah, why not? And I was like, I don't know. Like, I felt so much judgment in 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 the states yeah. about anything I did that it put more stress on me. All right. That's why everybody in other countries there. I listen to a couple of podcasts who are like in the UK and stuff, and they're like, they're, they always say this phrase like, you um, freaking Americans or those Americans, you know how Americans are. I always laugh at it because and I don't get offended because I'm like, yeah, we are fucking trip. We are a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we're a lot, you know, and then we're also rigid in our medical care and as far as like bedside manner and all that stuff. Like I, I respect a very direct doctor. Yeah. There needs to be a balance of empathy as well too, you know, and I love exactly. that in, 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 in um, Barbados, they were, they were very sensitive. And- and I told them what the doctor said about my age, and she was like, the, 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 her name is Dr. Skinner. She was like, well, you know, age does cause a factor because, you know, you have to understand when you age as a woman, these are the eggs that, you know, you reproduce and you lose a certain amount of eggs in time. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's every woman. And it doesn't mean that it's every time. So, you know, she's like, our best bet would be to do, like, let's look at your labs. Let's look at your medical reports. Let's see and understand what it is that's going on with you first before we make that judgment. And just that right there. I mean, she she said, like, yeah, you're, you're older. Like, there's probably going to be a problem. But she also said, like, let's see. Let's have hope. Let's have faith. Like, let's 
let's put it on the table before we make a judgment. And the other doctor, he was just like, you're 38 year old. I'm not looking at your results. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that just sounds like a lazy ass doctor to me. Because, <laughs> again, it's part of your job to be able to. I mean, he's getting 50K, 50K. Mm -hmm. And there were women in the waiting room. So, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's unfortunate, but it's very fortunate that you were able to get to Barbados. Yes. yes. <laughs> I loved it. And the island is beautiful. I asked you earlier, did you have any specific diagnosis before this, the, the Barbadian special? Endometriosis. Okay, yeah. you do have endometriosis. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I forgot that. I think I was just yeah. paying attention to other things you were saying. <laughs> so you had endometriosis. Did you yeah. get um, procedures and, and did you have procedures that you needed to do to treat the endometriosis and stuff? So at the time, they didn't have any procedures to, to mm -hmm. do anything. But what they did, what Barbados gave me was um, this shot called Zolodex. Okay. So Zolodex... Um, is what I got first before I started any meds. And when I read the paperwork, it kind of scared me because it says Zolodex was for people with cancer, but there's a small, small portion of it on the bottom of the 200 foot long uh, you know, description. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is that it quiets the endo. So they had me do that two times to quiet the end though before I started the process. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So how long was that, 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 um, when they were waiting for the, how your body responded? It was like a month in a month before. That is a long ass month. Yeah. <laughs> that's a long month. I had but at the same time, and that's why I asked. Yeah. At the same time, you know, I had to like find doctors in the States. So that was another thing. I had to find OBs that would do my medical, like that would do my labs and my ultrasounds so that I could mm -hmm. send it to Barbados. And then mm -hmm. that was another journey by itself because a lot of doctors in the United States don't want to do it because they're like, well, you're not a patient for this. I'm like, yeah, but I'm doing fertility treatment outside and I need to mm -hmm. send it to them. Mm -hmm. So can you just do this, this, this lab? And I got a lot of pushback from a lot of doctors that didn't want to do it, that they were like, no, 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 the insurance is not going to pay me to do that until, um, I finally found one doctor at an urgent care that she was like, look, I can do it for you now and I'll, I'll write it up as something else. But what I'll do is I have a friend who's an OB. And you can give her a call. I'll tell her what's happening. And I went to that OB. She was not close to home. She was very far. But she was like, yeah, sure. I'll, I I get it. She's like, uh, who has $50,000 to give these doctors here? So she would do the labs. And, uh, you know, I know it's probably, it's illegal in the United States to do that stuff. But she would do the labs and run it and give me my results. So I could send it to mm -hmm. Barbados. But that's that's one of the biggest challenges about doing anything out of country and having to do the labs before you get there. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine that being um, just a lot of back and forth between between clinics. Yeah. Mm. Well, thank you for sharing your story, Mandy. Is there anything that you would like the community to know? Um, in general, or is there a special word that you would like to say to them? Um, I mean, I I feel like I've been through a lot and enough to understand where women are at our age, you know, in our forties, trying for a baby. It's not hard. It's not. It is hard. It's not impossible. Um, and I don't want anyone to look at my story and say, okay, well, that's a lot of ups and downs. And I don't know if I can do that. Mm -hmm. You actually can do it. You're much stronger mm -hmm. than you give yourself credit for. And when you walk out of this trying, even if it fails, or if it's, you know, if you have a child, you see life differently. There's, there's, that's a journey that if you don't try, you're always going to sit there and say, what it could have shit is 
and financially it might be almost impossible in the United States, but there are clinics outside of the United States. And now there's programs, now there's scholarships, now there's grants, now there's opportunity. When I started, I didn't, I didn't have any of that. There was nothing there and it was not too far along, but there were no Facebook groups or Instagram groups or people to follow. And I feel like now we've finally given a voice to infertility and there are people that are standing up and saying, hey, I'm telling my story, I'm speaking my truth. And here's the ups and downs. Here's what you should look at, what you shouldn't look at. And I, and I want women to know that, you know, there's information out there now and, mm -hmm. and accept it and don't be shy about it. Mm -hmm. And if your family and friends don't understand, there's a whole community out there that does yeah. and, and will offer you the advice or that shoulder to cry on or that window to scream out of like there's people there and i'm hoping that with my story and you know i'm actually working on my first book about my story to help i i i feel like what i've been through was pretty heavy and we all kind of go through the same thing but being a woman of color being a woman from the Caribbean, we don't talk about it. We don't exchange these stories. You know, like you said, your grandmother had her last child at 45. We don't even know how she felt or what people were saying to her or how the community was treating her because she had a child so old, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, 45 is not old. So I feel like we we definitely created a better path and community and an open arena for, for people to talk about it and for women to feel like, okay, I can't tell my sister or my mom because they don't understand or they're saying hurtful things. And, you know, there's a community that will hear you and understand you and and can definitely hold your hand through the process. Yeah, yeah. I don't have anything to add, Andy said it all. And and there's bits and pieces of gems throughout this episode for you guys to take notes on or put in the back of your mind for when you are going to the doctor and paying attention to the red flags of doctors. You know, the new thing is red flags. Everybody's putting red flags on everything. So mm -hmm. you see a red flag with a doctor, run, okay? <laughs> run. Just like that, that, that sound that everybody's using for their reels. <laughs> the music starts coming in, dun, 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 dun. run. Yeah, <laughs> run the hell up on out of the doctor's office. Okay, Mandy didn't been through three before she got to the perfect one. And I yeah. went through one before getting to the perfect one. So um, just thank you, Mandy. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank you again. Now tell us where we can find you on Instagram at imperfect ivf on instagram and facebook and tiktok yes tiki tock <laughs> love it so thank you mandy again girl for coming on the show sharing a couple of laughs a couple of wow moments with us and just being a voice and a pillar for others in the community on instagram as well as facebook you guys make sure that you connect with mandy on instagram or facebook whatever you prefer or both <laughs> And um, yeah, you guys know where to find me, Infertility in the Podcast on IG, and consider joining our Patreon community as well that I was telling you guys about earlier in the intro. And uh, yeah, I think we're good for today. So peace and blessings, you guys, and happy St. Patrick's Day. Hi, thanks for having me.